10, 12 feet high or more coming in around the point and going by the wharf, and it just seemed something was unreal. Uh, but this funny colored air that came through just before, it was like magnolias, very sweet, and this lasted maybe 15 minutes, and it was a little hours, I recall, and having never experienced that before, you could stand up and lean against the wind, lean way back. So the 19, and then uh, Hurricane Carol come along, and, and uh, uh, my Uncle Carol lost his boat, and he bought a new one, and he called it Hurricane Carol. That's the name he named his new boat when he bought it to flip out. comes out to me the most is uh, Hurricane Carol. That really tore up everything around here. I used to fly with this guy. And the next day after that, every place was full of pieces of boats and boats with just the two engines sitting there and the whole rest of the boat gone, <laughs> torn apart, gone. And sardinas lost a lot of their gear and they'd be all rolled up on the beach. And well, But like I say, all of the <clears throat> skiffs and dinghies and things were just smashed it. And every cove was right full. The hurricane it was called Hurricane Carol. Trees down, people's boats came ashore. And it was just a terrible storm, a lot of wind. Oh, lots of boats were sunk. It was raining so hard, I stayed aboard the boat and I pull up the door and bailed it out in the next to it. five doors. Anyway, I looked up, it was just coming down in buckets, and there was a big bunch of alders. Coming right down the beach with the with the stream there, coming coming right down the beach it was raining so that was all erosion that had come from up the end of the stream there somewhere. All right, this big oak out here, the, the leaves were at right angles, every leaf. Uh, <laughs> and as he said, when he got to Booth Bay, there went all the leaves. It was blowing so, and Victoria told me this morning. She was working at the post office at the time with with Bud's mother, and it was blowing so, and they were they were huddled together because and the building was old, and they were scared to death it was going to blow over, and uh, and Pearl kept saying, "Should I put the stove out? <laughs> Should I put the stove out?" And Victoria says, "Yes, yes." <laughs> As I say, they had they had sardines nets off springs during World War, uh, Hurricane Carol. Carol. And Lawson told he was asleep aboard one of the boats there. Well, it came on to blow hard and blew him right on that shore. And he threw him a line and he hauled him right up over the ledge. <laughs> but you guys age, age. Okay, and it, was hit, it hit like a ton. It was like the calm before the storm, and the next thing, it was on us. And I mean, it was screaming. We could lean against the wind. It was blowing so hard. And we'd stand there and lean against the boat, boat houses at Handy Boat, and there's a cove up in there. It looked like somebody had been putting demolition stuff in there for about 10 years, and it was just all piled up. And it was boats all um, destroying. And they lost a boat down in Coleman's Cove. It, bl it blew about 120 here. You'd have to lean way forward in order to not fall over oh. that just like dominoes. In three different directions in that. The cord of wood that fell in the golf club woods and they, they came down as all soft. Many, many times. <laughs> yeah. And I've walked across many, many times. And they've gone across in automobiles. seen ice all the way to Green Island and uh, no no open water inside of Green Island. But 1935 was the year they drove over to the newspaper place and got the newspapers. You've all seen that picture, have you? Or what they drove over in the truck up to the press hill and got the newspaper and drove back to Quebec. It was ice. over a month that the boat didn't get the central landing. Would you? Yeah, I have. I've walked across to Cousin Island on, on ice. And usually when it freezes over, it's when the neap tides are occurring. Spring tides and neap tides. 
Your spring tides are your highest highs and lowest lows. Your neap tides are your lowest highs and highest lows. We walked across and went to Cousins Island. We went and got groceries, came back, hauled it back on the toboggan. We went, we drove down the ramp and off on the ice, and then we parked the car beside the Chisunko and took pictures of it. And then we drove it back to ice. Uh, and all of it is very dangerous if uh, you're not aware of how thick it is. You have to be, it has to be four or five inches thick. In. I walked across the bay with Rod, uh, with Rod again, with Ethan and Aaron's great grandfather. I and took Mike with me on a sled and we walked across in in the 60s and we walked across to Cousins Island and went in down 1978. Our daughter, Krista, walking over to Little George and I were wild when I found that out because the air hole tonight. I don't care how it is. And and then uh, uh, From the Stone Pier over to Cousins is 93. But we've had some since then. I'm oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was 10, I think, it was frozen. And we went with Smitty, which would be um, Jasper Smith, Father uh, Archie Boyne. And they had a hand sled with a punt on it. And we walked across to the end of Cousins Island. And when we went around the point at Cousins, there was a, there was a, a, a split in the ice that you, we had to step over. However, you could look down in, and the ice was so deep that you could see it all the way down, just as far as you could see. Smitty and Archie turned around, and they came back to Shebeg, and my mother and sister and I kept on and walked to Princess Point over on the mainland. And we had family in Freeport, and they picked us up, took us to Freeport for the night, brought us back the next day, and the three of us, we really did, all alone by ourselves, came back the same way we went over. Mm -hmm. When we got back to Shebeg, we turned around and we could see the bay splitting the the ice was splitting from Moshe's. It was coming down, and the next day it was really almost out. So it's very treacherous, and it probably wasn't very smart. But nevertheless, I've done it. I've skated. I looked to get on your knees and look out the window, and the snow was level with the bottom of the window, right spread across to Joe's house, and it took us three days before we got out of the house. Three days before we get out of the house. 1952, when I started driving a town truck. I said, we're going to plow the island. I sat all day and all night and all day long on a John Deere bulldozer, sitting out door and plowed every bit of this island, going four miles an hour. And I had a few windows. We had two story house there where the snow was so deep. There was two, two story houses were wooden plows. With, they were V shaped plows. They told me how the snow and ice and all. And they made great skating. <laughs> oh, we could skate to the east I'd go to the east end sometimes three times a day. And, uh, the whole road down through there at the time. Lost, meaning they couldn't uh, plow it. They, it they, they, they couldn't get the plow through. And uh, that was 52, I think, as I remember. And uh, there was a whole week of vacation from school. And us boys all shoveled on the road. We were still in high school at the time, and uh, we all shoveled on the road for four or five days down there. Down <coughs> the road opened up. Pretty treacherous out there. I'm scared to death of the stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I can, we can remember that about when we were your, your kids' age here, yeah, and uh, my this uncle cool. having a horse and an old homemade plow that he used to plow the road with. That's how old I am. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, I don't remember it, but he also plowed the roads, but he and with his horses, work horses, and uh, he had, I think he had a big, very large plow that they towed around the island, so there were a lot of different men that, that actually kept the roads open. Of course, we didn't have, well, they didn't have cars much way back then, so we're talking about early 1900s, I guess. When they had a snowstorm, the men would walk a shovel. I mean, because they didn't really have the plows that they do now, and uh, and, it, and and everybody was happy to puzzle, uh, puzzle, shovel because it brought in extra money. 
you know, and my law, uh, I've got a picture of uh, four or five men, well, uh, Bill Ross of Bud and Scotty and Ellsworth all sitting around my table where they'd been up shoveling on the road. And, uh, but that's what they did. They shoveled all over Shavig. Yeah, that's what they had to do. Rows, so all the rows were all ice. So we used to skate in school. And uh, also, we learned to, uh, to some of the older people that they could sit on sleds and make little broomsticks with nails on the end of them, and they could sit and push themselves along the road. When you get good enough, you go pretty fast. So we did that. Yeah, when I was a little girl, when it snowed, and we had a bad storm, it would come up to the second floor bedroom windows on my mother's side, it was the Northeast. They, it used to form these huge uh, snowdrift gullies out through there. And we used to go over with cardboard and slide on them. It was great. Our skating would start probably November 3rd because it would be so cold. It was a lot colder back then. And I think a lot of people burned wood as well as their... Uh, this is the blizzard of 1978. And it destroyed our wharf at the boat yard, and we had to rebuild it. Um, your age, and the snowdrifts would be out over those gullies. And they would be almost level across. They used to put snow fences the whole length of the road to keep the snow from drifting across the road. What it would do, it, the snow would build up behind the fence instead of coming. And I mean, there used to be so much snow long in there uh, on that beach going up Sandy Point. On the average eight or nine foot tide, you could not walk on the, on, up there without rubber boots on rolled up because the snow would be right up 10, 15 feet high right against the water. Now, we've seen the snow in my lifetime. Now, Mother, you lost me.